I've been telling you he was a fraud. I've been telling you guys for years now that Colin Kaepernick is a fraud, that Colin Kaepernick really had no interest in making an immaculate return to football. This dude, he changed from Colin to Colleen years ago. But leave it to The Rock, leave it to the most electrifying man in all of entertainment to take my theory and make it a fact. And look, look, look. I'm not the only one that's known this. You guys are smart. You guys have been right here beside me all along seeing right through Colin Kaepernick, better known here on the channel as the father of lies. For the past six, maybe seven years, Colleen has mastered the role as the ultimate victim. His PR team, they've been working overtime in this attempt to make him the most sympathetic figure in sports. Oh, I feel so bad for Cap. He's the victim of discrimination. He was banned from the NFL because those evil plantation owners can't stand to see the black man thrive. Um, Colin Kaepernick was on his way out of the NFL before he started kneeling for the national anthem. This is one of those pesky little details that the mainstream media conveniently overlooks because it doesn't fit their narrative. The father of lies, he began kneeling for the national anthem. I think it was during the preseason of 2016. What the media conveniently forgets here, Colin Kaepernick, he lost his position as the starting quarterback in San Francisco. He lost it during training camp to Blaine Gabbert. KC, who in the hell's Wayne Taggart? Yeah, that's exactly my point. Blaine Gabbert, he was the captain of the bum squad. He's what they call a bust. He was drafted early in the first round. And 12 seasons in the NFL, Blaine Gabbert has won 12 games. That's the guy that Colin Kaepernick lost his job to. Yes, he was eventually blackballed from the NFL for being bad for business because he refused to get off his fucking knees. But even if he was holding the flag during the playing of the national anthem, Colin Kaepernick, he was on his way out of the NFL regardless. But for the past six or seven years, Colin Kaepernick, he has been the ultimate pretender. Matter of fact, He's a dual pretender. He's pretended to be the ultimate victim. He's pretended to be the victim of mythical racism. But he's also been pretending that he wants to play football again. I got to give the guy credit. Well, actually, I have to give his publicist credit because there's absolutely no way that Colin Kaepernick thought of this brilliant strategy on his own. While writing his children's book, the publisher, they gave him this aptitude test. Very first question on the test, they asked him to spell a three-letter word. Colin Kaepernick wrote, it. Close, but no Chris Cuomo cigar. Hey, it's me, Chrissy C. Anyway, I got to give his publicist some credit here. They came up with a brilliant strategy for Colin Kaepernick. It's the same strategy that Caitlin Collins should have been following at CNN. Katie, woo! Katie, woo! Over the past few years, anytime a starting quarterback was injured in the NFL, the media, they would claim that Colin Kaepernick was the man to save the season, the man to save the franchise. That's a great position to be in, especially as a public figure. You always want to be the guy that people think can save the team. Colin Kaepernick, He's been able to ride this mythical perception for the past six years. This strategy has kept him in the spotlight, has kept him in this prominent role as the ultimate victim. When you don't have the talent to actually play in the NFL, this is a great strategy to follow. You receive endorsement deals, you're still talked about in the mainstream media, and the best part is, you don't have to leave your couch. The problem for Colin Kaepernick, he has somehow found a way to fuck this up. <laughs> I would imagine this is why his publicist doesn't allow him to do interviews. This is why they don't put him in front of the camera. This is why everything, everything has to be filtered through them. Because when you give the father of lies the autonomy to make decisions on his own, the gravy train turns into the Bruce caboose. A couple of weeks ago, Kali wrote a letter to the New York Jets front office. This was maybe... A week, maybe two weeks after Aaron Rodgers was lost for the season, Kaepernick, he writes this letter, or 
he has someone write the letter for him and he signs his name at the bottom. During the letter, he is begging the Jets to give him a spot on the practice squad. Please, please let me join the practice squad. I'll be the tackling dummy. I'll be the cheerleader. I'll work for free, damn it. I really need this because the public is losing interest in me. Ho, ho, ho. Couple of days later, Colin Kaepernick, he receives the following response from the New York Jets. Now, I'm not an expert in sign language, but I think this was their way of telling him to fuck off. What does Colin Kaepernick do? Does he do what most self-respecting men would do when they're faced with rejection? Move on or find another way to get what you want? No! Kali, he calls up his pretend friend, rapper J. Cole. Since J. Cole's social media following is substantially larger than Colin Kaepernick's, he gets him to publish this letter on social media. Now, in the past, this would have garnered plenty of sympathy for Kaepernick throughout the mainstream media. Deadspin would have written articles blasting the NFL for mythical racism. Stephen A. Smith, he would criticize the NFL on woke take, claiming that the league has a problem with black quarterbacks. Hell, even CNN would have gotten involved. CNN, they would ask Wolf Blitzer, Woof! Woof! They would ask Wolf Blitzer to run a story, begging viewers to sympathize with Colin Kaepernick because he was being held down by the evil white man. Unfortunately for Colin Kaepernick, that ain't happened this time. Now, obviously, he was universally criticized by normal people who have been asking him to do his best impersonation of Houdini and disappear for years now. But this time was different because this time, he was also criticized by his pretend friends in the mainstream media. Even the media has gotten tired of Colin Kaepernick. Even the media was accusing him of being a fraud. Well, almost everyone in the media. Jamel Hill, she was still biting into the shit sandwich. Smelly Jamelly, she's the only one left who believes that Colin Kaepernick actually wants back into the NFL. Not only that, Jamel Hill also believes that Colin Kaepernick could lead a team to the Super Bowl. <laughs> After weeks of criticism, after weeks of taking hits to his public image, Colin Kaepernick, he was offered a lifeline. Someone saw him struggling to stay afloat in the woke sea. They saw Kali next to the CNN Titanic just waiting to be pulled under. The most electrifying man in all of entertainment offered to save Colin Kaepernick's career. The Rock. The Rock either owns the XFL or he's one of the primary owners of the XFL. Either way, if The Rock says you can play in the XFL, you'll be playing. Now, it is no secret that the XFL is struggling. Again, one of the problems when you're trying to create these semi-professional football leagues, you don't have any star power. All the stars are in the NFL. There's already a minor league system set up for the NFL. It's called college football. For one of these semi-professional leagues to succeed, they have got to give viewers a reason to watch. They can't do that with the football because the product on the field is substandard. But if the XFL could get a star, a household name, they might have a chance to succeed. I would imagine that was exactly what The Rock was thinking. He reached out to Colin Kaepernick. He set up a meeting with the father of lies and his team. Allegedly, The Rock offered Kaepernick a job. Since he's been begging for years to get back to playing football, you would think, you would think, Colin Kaepernick would happily accept this generous offer. This is the perfect scenario, right? He would be the focal point of the league. Colin Kaepernick, he would be the superstar of the XFL. This would be his chance to prove that he still has what it takes to compete at a somewhat competitive level. The Rock, he puts the offer on the table. Colin Kaepernick turns it down. <laughs> Finally, The Rock has come back to reality. Of course he turned it down. Now, there are a variety of reasons as to why Colin Kaepernick refused to sign with the XFL. Most obvious reason, he has no interest in playing football. Like all of us have been saying for years now, his pleas to get back into the NFL, this was nothing but a publicity stunt. Number two, Colin Kaepernick thinks he's too good for the XFL. And when I say too good, I'm not talking about talent. 
Colin Kaepernick, he thinks he's too big of a star to play in the XFL. According to The Rock, one of the reasons that he turned down the offer was because the XFL just couldn't give him enough money. I'm not buying that. I don't think it had anything to do with money. Hell, if they offered him a dollar, it would be one dollar more than he's made playing football in the last six years. The money was just a convenient excuse. I think the main reason Colin Kaepernick turned down the XFL besides the fact that he has no interest in playing football, the XFL can't offer him enough exposure. It would also damage his credibility, and I'll explain why. If Colin Kaepernick signed with the XFL, it would generate plenty of interest throughout the mainstream media. To be honest with you, he would probably pop a big rating for his first game. Obviously, his supporters would watch him, but even people who dislike Colin Kaepernick, they would watch his first game just to see if he fails, just to see if he qualifies to be a huge embarrassing failure. The curiosity factor, it would spike interest for one week. But what happens after that? What happens if Colin Kaepernick fails to be entertaining? What happens if he absolutely sucks on the field? I mean, that's likely to happen. This is the same guy who lost his job in San Francisco to Blaine Gabbert. What happens then? Ratings plummet. Colin Kaepernick is exposed. All those endorsement deals which were given based on the perception that he has influence and drawing power, all those opportunities vanish. If you're Colin Kaepernick, it's just not worth the risk. It's easier and safer to maintain your role as the victim, the guy the media talks about every time a starting quarterback goes down in the NFL. The problem, though, for Colin Kaepernick, that free ride is over. <laughs> this dude is the ultimate fraud. He has been playing the media for years, and these dumbasses, they have blindly followed him. This, this should be it for Colin Kaepernick. It's over. It is over. There is no need for further discussion. This dude, he has squeezed every last penny of woke welfare that could be squeezed out of this fantasy. He has been exploiting this fantasy for years now, and it was a good strategy while it lasted. But nothing lasts forever, and it's over for Colin Kaepernick. But give me your thoughts. Colin Kaepernick, he has been begging for an opportunity for years now. XFL, The Rock, they give him the opportunity that he's been begging for, and he turns them down. Does this prove once and for all that Colin Kaepernick is a fraud, that he's been playing the mainstream media all along, all these years? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate you guys and your support. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com, kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys tomorrow.